Hello, my friends, and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Time with Miss Sarah. I am so excited to share some more of Paul's life and his faith journey with you. Before we get started, I'm going to pray with you, and then uh, we're just going to dive right in. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord, for your word, Lord, for your promises, uh, God, I thank you for giving us stories like Paul's so that we can be encouraged and driven, Lord, to uh, share your gospel with everybody that we know. Lord, that we would be bold and courageous, just like Paul. Lord, that we would not fear, but be ready to share Jesus with everyone around us. Lord, we love you and we praise you for all that you're doing. And God, I pray that everything that is done here today would just bring honor and glorify your name, but bring a huge smile to your face. And these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, in today's story, you need your Bible, okay? We're gonna worship, and then when we get back, I want you to already be turned to the book of Acts, chapters 27 and 28. I'll see you in just a minute. That was great singing. I am so glad that you have fun with our worship just like I do. In today's story, we're still talking about the uh, about Paul and how he lived his life. Now, if you remember, Paul used to be Saul and he hated Christians. He was not very nice to Christians. To anybody who believed Jesus, he was not nice. In fact, if you remember several weeks ago, our story of Stephen and Paul was responsible for the stoning or the, the death of Stephen only because he was a Christian and because he believed in Jesus. But on the road to Damascus, he met Jesus and Jesus totally changed his life. And from that moment on, Paul dedicated his entire life to telling everybody he met how wonderful God was and how he loved us so much he gave us Jesus. And so in tonight's story, Paul has been arrested. He was going around telling everybody he knew um, about Jesus and how great Jesus was, and he was arrested for it. And he was put on a ship and he was sent away. And um, God, once he was arrested, God sent him an angel and said, Paul, you have done a great job of telling everybody about my love for them and for, about Jesus, but you need to tell the Romans as well. And you're going to go to Rome and you're going to tell all of them about me. And so while he is in prison, he is then sent, um, he is ordered to be put on a ship and sent to Rome, just like God said. And so while he is, um, while he's on this boat, he um, tells them that, you know, I, I just want you to know that I love God and I, I believe in Jesus and um, I am being sent to Rome on purpose. And while they're traveling, it's late in the fall, and so it's not really a great time for boat travel. If you've ever been on a cruise ship, um, you cannot travel on a cruise ship in the late fall or winter months because of the storms, because of the hurricanes. And so this, it was very much the same um, way back in Paul's day, even though their boats weren't as fancy as a cruise ship. And he had told, um, so while they're, while they're on their cruise to Rome, he, uh, they come across a storm, and it is a horrible storm. It lasts for several days, um, like 14 days. It's a crazy storm. There's high winds, and the captain is about ready to just put everyone on lifeboats and send them over the side to safety. And Paul says, no, God has promised that all of us, all 276 of us, will make it to the shore alive. And of course, the captain and the Roman soldiers that were in charge of Paul didn't believe him at first. But um, as it progresses on the 14th day, 
um, they finally run their boat aground. Um, they're getting ready to hit a, a little island or like sandbar kind of thing in the middle of the ocean. And they're not far from a mainland, um, but they're too far away to survive. And the Roman guards, they, they're like, we have to get rid of all the prisoners. We don't want them to escape. And so they, they've decided that they will start killing all the prisoners, including Paul. And Paul says, no, stop. I promise you, God has told me that we will all make it alive. And just about then, their boat runs aground and starts to break up. And so the captain yells, I believe him, and everyone jumps overboard. And he tells them, grab a piece of the wreckage and head to the mainland. So as they're going, they all get to shore. They end up on a little island called Malta. And as they're looking around and everyone is kind of catching their breath from swimming and from the storm, they realize that everyone, all 276 people, have survived this crazy storm and this shipwreck in the middle of the ocean. Well, while they're there, um, the people of Malta start to come out and greet them. And Paul writes how incredibly kind they were. And uh, they start making sure that everyone is okay and that they're, you know, have blankets or that they're warm. And um, he starts to sit down with them. And all of a sudden, Paul is bitten by a snake. Now, the people of Malta did not believe in God. And they believed that when Paul was bitten by a snake, that he must have made their gods, the false gods, angry and uh, he was for sure going to die. This was a poisonous snake that would have taken his life, but it didn't. And he told them, Paul told the people of Malta, he said, I'm, I'm going to be okay. This snake bite should kill me, but it won't. God is with me. He has promised me that I will survive long enough to tell the people of Rome all about his love and share Jesus with them. So the people of Malta sit a little bit longer and they all start to realize he's not dying. He's, he's totally fine. In fact, the bite marks are even healing on their own. About this time, the head, kind of the chief of the island, his dad is very, very sick and dying. He's like this close to dying. And Paul, he hears of this and Paul says, take me to him. So the, the chief of the island takes him to his father, takes Paul to his father and Paul begins to pray to God for the health of this man. And as he's praying to God for his healing, the man becomes healed. He's completely well. This stirs such an excitement that he prays and the entire sick population of the island is healed. I don't know about you, but in a day where things are crazy and where people are sick, lots of people, just knowing that God can heal people all over is amazing to me. So after this, after God healed all of the sick on the island of Malta, they sat down together and they had a meal and the people of Malta provided everything that the crew, that the ship crew needed to get to Rome. Once they had, they had a boat, they had food and supplies, everything that they needed to get to Rome. Because remember, that's what God told Paul. He said, you are going to Rome and you are going to preach the gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles. The Gentiles were all the Romans or anybody not Jewish. And so they get on their boat and they finally make it 
all the way to Rome. Paul had earned the respect of everyone on the crew, including the soldiers that were in charge of holding him prisoner. And they allowed him to live in Rome for two years in his own home, able to see visitors of any kind, anybody who wanted to come see him could. And Paul continued to preach the gospel to every Jew and Gentile in Rome that would come to his house. I am telling you, my friends, when God says he will do it, you can guarantee that he will do it. He never fails. He always keeps his promises. I hope that you are encouraged this week, one, to be bold to share your faith. Just like Pastor Kyle told us a week ago on Sunday, be bold and share your faith. We can, we should, and we will share Jesus with others. Our, our country, our world needs him desperately. But to know that no matter what happens, God keeps his promises. I just want to tell you kiddos, I love you and I am so excited to continue sharing God's word with you. And I can't wait to see you again next week. I'm going to pray for us and then we'll be dismissed. Father God, I thank you so much of how you love us. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that gives us courage and strength to share your gospel. But God, I also thank you that you are a true living God who loves us so much that one, you gave us Jesus, but two, you keep your promises forever. Lord, we love you and we praise you for all that you're doing. And we thank you for how good you are to us and these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, y'all have a great day and I will see you next week. This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my, I'll fix my eyes. eyes on you
I'll keep on looking.